Thanks for watching the video. Today, I have a video that I did with Martin Ayers, and we've talked for hours and hours, but I think this chunk that I'm releasing now, because I'm trying to release it in like these digestible chunks that people can do their best to understand. This, I think, is the best video that we've released from Martin, because you basically get some of the philosophy, but more you get the entire package of how to go through this entire thing. If you really listen, I was just going to release a video, but I wanted to put this intro on it because I want to for you guys to key in to a few certain things. Martin separates it into a few different stages of the swing, which is similar to what Hogan said. So basically there's what you do before the swing. There's what you do for the first part of the swing. And then what you do, which is like, so once the club starts moving and then what you, ha what you do kind of in the transition. So what you're going to hear today is you're going to hear a little bit about this steering wheel drill that you re might remember Lee and I did a video about called, we called it knuckle flow, but Martin has a steering wheel over his head. So that would be like what you do at first. Then you do the baton twirl drill. That would be like the second part of the swing. And finally, uh, the third drill. So there's the steering wheel knuckle flow drill. Second is the baton twirl drill that helps you uh, flow with the momentum of the club and not try to overpower it, but kind of you lead it and then it leads you. And that's what the, the baton drill, twirl drill is uh, helping you with. Finally, you keep it all in line and because he doesn't think you have to do a lot of uh, lateral motion or really any conscious lateral motion. You keep it all in line with these two different step drills, the step in drill, the step out drill. So trying to make this as straightforward for people as possible for people that really want to be straightforward about it, it would be the steering wheel drill to start the flow, the baton drill drill to work with the momentum you create it, and then it kind of creates the momentum in you. It takes over. And third, keeping that all in alignment to stepping it with the stepping in and the stepping out drill. That is potentially simplifying things too much, but I, but there are there is I'm trying to be sensitive to different types of learners. Some people are uh, less philosophical and really want the uh, nuts and bolts of it. The final thing that I tell everybody with with this stuff that you're about to say is that you really don't have to. I've seen the people who have the best success, and I'm getting so many messages about these videos. And the people who are having the best success with this stuff are kind of comfortable that they don't know exactly how to do it, but they know there's something there, and they go to the range with like this open mind. And you really want to take a lot of swings with your eyes closed and say, hey, what would it feel like if I never let the momentum stop where the momentum continues the entire swing and it's I'm in front of it and then I'm behind it, but it's never stopping. And I think that's why Dr. Kwan and Martin, Sandra Shoffley, Dana Dahlquist, a lot of people have gotten into these flow drills, step drills, continuous motion drills. They're saying it in different ways. But I think Martin's way is uh, super interesting for people to get into. You just have to really, really forget for for a period of time, forget about the uh, geometry of it, the positions of it. Okay, so I'm going to let Martin take the rest of this video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Continuing this journey with me, I'm with Lee Dietrich, joining us from San Dimas, and then uh, Martin from the Gold Coast in Australia. It's been the most uh, polarizing teacher to date, I think, on the Golf Channel as far as, man, I'm getting uh, comments where it's, it kind of seems like there's this type of person that can be open-minded enough to kind of let go of some things are really getting a lot out of this. And then other people, there's, there's say like, they just say, immediately, they don't understand it. And there's like, I don't even know what to do with that information. For the people who've been watching this stuff, you know, and then they're probably now six, seven hours deep into some of this stuff. And they want to go to the range and they want to start fires churning of, you know, making this stuff happen. How would you recommend they, they start well, yes, I mean, it, implement it? There's two things that we've discussed that I would say go, go together, right? The baton twirl drill is something that's so, so simple on its face. Okay. But to do that drill perfectly requires everything to be coordinated from the club head all the way back through the handle of the club as they're turning end over end. You know, what that does 
with with one hand it's much easier well with two hands once you graduate to the two hands now you have to coordinate both sides of your body with this club that's turning end over end and that has to be coordinated all the way down to your feet i just think that's an essential skill that people need to have which is to know that they must keep time with the club rather than try to move the club at arbitrary times in the swing okay just make a golf swing keep time with that swing it's just to me that's the easiest way to play golf and the easiest place for people to start now of course people aren't going to be satisfied with just that and i i certainly wouldn't be i i want to make that the best it can be and the next thing i would work on then would be that alignment with the steering wheel that's where you started okay if they go back and look at the be better golf video initially i think it was the one that you called knuckle flow right and i said that you guys got certain elements of that were like bang on what i was trying to say particularly what you arrived at is you got to the one directional nature of it as lee that go this way and then move it out here when you rotate that way yeah right okay it's it that it goes this way and then it keeps going which is exactly exactly right that sort of is practically what you want to get out of the alignment drill is that you do in fact need to feel as though your arms and legs in the early setup and and early part of the swing are working a little bit in opposition to each other and you can feel good about that knowing that that actually is aligned to each other and that's what the steering wheel video is meant to teach you it's meant to teach you that that opposition there is alignment it's not it's not actually opposition so if you combine that beginning with the the baton twirl then you say okay if you if you follow what you and lee did make that basic motion okay and then but when it turns over it doesn't turn over then you move it over somewhere else okay it turns over and that gets the club dropping behind you and you just follow that energy to the end of the swing which is what the baton twirl hopefully will teach you the feeling of and then i'd say if you combine those two things with the directness a lack of lateral okay now instead of doing this action where you're moving it sideways and then moving it sideways you're making this opposing action which is allowed to twirl over more or less in place now i've sent you i believe brennan did i send you video of my chinese translator doing the the medicine ball drills it's a fe- it's essentially what you guys were calling the knuckle flow just like with dr kwan's stepping drills I like the basic dynamic, but I don't like how much there's this side-to-side effort. And it's the same with my medicine ball drill. The knuckle flow is good, but there was a little bit of side-to-side in it, which we don't need. I think we're better off without. And this is where, you know, people are saying, well, it's it's just like Milo lines, it's just like a swing. It's just like this. Look, it's not, it's not just like any of those things, but it's, there are similarities, of course, you know, and um i'm not i'm not out here trying to be different i'm out here to try to get to what i believe is is some truth let's check this out and just explain to lee and i what's going on here can you see this i cannot but i know what i know what he's doing in the first instance you can see he's doing the step out drill which i gave you the other day but he's doing the step out drill with a ball rather than with a club okay Okay, and that's why he's he's taking the actual steps back in opposition to the turn of the ball. So when he turns the ball left in his hands like a wheel, he steps back to the right. And then as the ball then continues in its one motion to turn now to the right in its orbit, he then steps back to the left. So the stepping is the response to the ball. And then just like you, Brendan, what you did with the drills is that he does it in place. So there's the two versions he's doing. He's doing it with the stepping and then he's doing it in play. Still doing the stepping that. You know, that is almost like doing Happy Gilmore walking backwards. 
so yeah. so you have the pelvis not going into the space where the arms want to go because you're moving backwards you've got the pelvis moving away from the target line which yeah. allows you to drop the club to the inside i don't think there's any thrust downstairs in a good player towards the ball yeah well I'm... okay and yeah I mean, most people kind of know that but i wish you could sort of hit balls with that drill okay you can't it's and this goes to you know one of the key points i said to brendan with regard to his training when i asked him to get in closer and he asked me why and i said well because you you can't make the swing you want to make from where you are you got to get in where you can make that swing so when you do that drill, you'd have to actually stand with the ball somewhere between your feet and know exactly how far you're going to step back, and it's not practical. Yep. And that's much better. So here it is down the line. And I started a little bit too close but I was in sequence with one hand like so it gets really easy and again if I'd been doing this drill I would I would want to go here and just step so there's that final step of straight 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 okay so I'll just run through that again. Club on the ground. See where you, see where you'd go. Club, left foot, right foot. Club, left foot, right foot. And the next word there is obviously club. Okay, but I don't even need to say that because going left foot, right foot energizes the club and takes it off. All I've got to do is when I put the club back on the ground. I keep that on. Whatever pressure got it to the ground, I keep it there. Okay, so that's that drill from Caddy View. I'll show it to you down the line. And I'll show it to you. This is how I end up teaching it in most of the lessons that I use it because people are doing this very carefully. The stepping out drill is sort of designed to mimic precisely what you have to do before the swing and at the start of the swing in a rehearsal. So you might notice that someone like Rory McIlroy or Sam Snead or Bobby Jones or many, many players, they uh, they pressure. Matt Wolf is the prime example. He really primes that left foot first, right? And then he swings. I'm suggesting that you want to kind of be stable in one place when you hit the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying no movement, but just as stable as possible, please. And so what, what this trigger to the left foot, which is what Lee's picked up in that drill, I go left, I go club on the ground, left foot first, right foot, club back on the ground, left foot, right foot. And the right foot starts the swing. So it doesn't really finish the swing. That drill's designed to get you into the motion, right? And feel the rhythm. It's not, it's not like a complete golf swing footwork exercise. Now, the reason I believe we want to go targetward in our feet first, then rearward in our feet, it, it gives me a chance to do two things without the club having moved yet, okay? This is what I like about it because I've got the club behind the ball and I go in my feet, I go left foot, right foot, and now the club moves. I've actually gone to I've gone to my impact position with the club right behind the ball. Then I've gone into my backswing and the club leaves the ball. And it's like my brain has gone from here to here to take it away, but it knows I've got to get right back to where I, I started. I started where I want to be at the end. Now that's a different take on the old impact fix idea. Because you're not you're not fixing the hands and the club, but you are fixing the sort of pressure into the ground in your body. Like, where am I going? I'm going here. And then from there where I'm going, I go into my swing. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Let me ask you about that because that's, I think 
how you start the swing really, really, the more you do this stuff, how you start the swing really determines the quality of your impact later on. Yes, it does. Yeah. So when you're doing that initial 10, so 10 is the club head. Yeah. And, uh, and then your feet are one and you're, you're getting that initial kind of preset stretch before the, the, the club moves. Now you can either do a little of that and move the club or really build it up with quite a lot of motion like like your interpreter is you know really moving to do that how do you know what is appropriate for you like we've seen like some golfers you really see that and then the club goes and other golfers like uh, uh you don't really see it but you know the forces are there it's it's like yeah so how do we figure out what's appropriate for us because i could try to oh. do it any number of ways yeah, yeah, sure, you can. And, well, I mean, the the thing is, I can't know what's best for you in terms of how much, right? Like, all I can tell you is the benefits of doing exactly that thing, right? Specifically, how you do it is something you're going to have to, you know, ultimately, you're the judge of it. So if you think of it, like, I can tell you that my current set of clubs is a little bit too beefy, a bit too big, a bit too stiff. Um, a bit too heavy um, for my current desire how I want to swing the club. I I used to be much more forceful in my pressures and, and much more forceful in that striking and rebounding and, and like I'd really give it to it right there. A bit like what I do see John Rahm, like John Rahm absolutely hammers it at the start of the swing. He hammers it. If you watch him, it's like his hands just, right? It's just he smacks it in his feet, he smacks it, and then it just takes off. Like this, it's so dynamic. And I I enjoyed doing that for a long, long time. But where I'm at now with it, having understood it just that little bit better in the last five or six years since I had those club built eight years ago, um, I'm like, I don't need such big clubs. So I think it's a moving landscape within the player. They've, they've got to feel... When they feel, you know, comfortable with it um, for a period of time with the amount, let's say, the amount of force that they're pressuring the club and then they're going away at a certain rate, right? There's a certain rate that will match you. So right? you say that John Rum hammers that. What, yeah. what is he hammering before the club even? Well, he's really, he's, he's, his hands really pressure the club, like the whole club all the way down to the head. And then you don't really see like a, a forward press. From well, him. if you watch it, you see, this is the thing. If you watch him, if you watch him, uh, it's not like a forward press. It's not a movement. It's a, it's like a, it's like he hits himself like, like that. If you watch it, it's very, very forceful. Okay. And again, watch Rory McIlroy's drive ahead in normal speed. Just watch his drive ahead. Don't look at him. Watch the drive ahead and watch how the drive ahead starts the swing like this, right? I'll, I'll mimic it with my fist. Rory's driver head goes like this. It's like it's like it has a conniption fit, and then it takes off. Okay, I've seen that. That's the moment where they are stabilizing the club and moving away from the club at not exactly the same time, but almost simultaneously. If you're going to throw a ball, the moment your hand moves, your feet start to you know. So so you don't move your feet first. That doesn't make athletic sense. But as soon as the ball moves and you're gonna I'm gonna throw this thing, as soon as your hand moves, you your foot you you're gonna wanna step somewhere and give it to it, right? It's the same thing here. Our hands our hands initiate contact with the club and the pressure and all of that. They initiate that and then the feet react to that. So the drills in part are to teach you to the the stepping drills are to teach you to respond, you know. Just like the baton twirl drill is there to teach you to respond. Hope you were liking the series. Talk to you soon.